Hi, my name is Martin Tett. I'm leader of Buckinghamshire County Council. Uh, there's only a short period of time now between uh, where we are today and the 25th of May, which is the final date for the receipt of representations on the proposal to modernise the local government of Buckinghamshire. There's an awful lot of stuff out there for people to listen to and to watch, and I know a number of you might have been to various presentations. Uh, there's an awful lot of mythology and a lot of, quite frankly, false facts out there. So what I want to try and do is give you a quick presentation on some of the key reasons why we think unitary is a good idea, why we particularly believe it's essential we have one council representing the whole geography of Buckinghamshire, uh, and then also look at some of the ways in which we are making sure that what we're delivering is going to be far more local, better value, and much closer to residents. So let's just run through some of these points. First of all, why change? What's really important to realise is that this debate hasn't just started in the last couple of weeks. It's been discussed since 2014 when Aylesbury Vale District Council, one of the district councils, started the debate about going to a unitary style of government. Um, and since then, the County Council has responded to that and we've developed our own business case that was back in 2016. And that was after pretty extensive consultation with residents, uh, with various business groups, we went out to various localities and talked to residents and businesses. And as a result, we got a pretty good idea of what people were looking for in terms of any modernisation proposal. Particularly they wanted one point of contact, a lot of simplification of dealing with what most people just call the council. Most people don't know what districts do, what the county council does. To them it's all just one body that they look to to solve the problems that they have in their day-to-day -day lives. So whether it's a bin being emptied, or whether it's a pothole in the road, or getting the right school for their kids, they just want to talk to the council. And one of the big frustrations people were telling us is, they get passed around. They'll talk to one body, they'll say it's nothing to do with them, talk to somebody else. Quite often, responsibilities are split between different councils, and nobody's accepting responsibility. So we actually recognise the need to bring all these things together and make it much, much simpler for residents to actually get what they want from the local councils that they pay for. So public confusion about who does what, but also an awful lot of duplication. One of the things that residents kept saying to us when we explained what local government looked like was, why have you got the chief executives, highly paid people, running five different councils in the same area? Why do you have five finance departments? Why do you have five legal departments? Five HR departments? All of that duplication, when actually you could just have one team looking after the whole of the county, and that would save a shed load of money for residents that could be spent on frontline services. There's also a really key factor here, which is in the good old days, when there was lots of money in local government, some of these inefficiencies you could just basically shrug your shoulders a bit. But the reality today is in a period of what some people call austerity, where government is actually limiting the amount of money they give to local councils. Uh, and in the case of Buckinghamshire, this year in 19, sorry, in, in 20, <laughs> got, got my time right. Um, in 2018, um, there is absolutely no revenue support grant from central government for local councils in Buckinghamshire. So we have nothing coming from central government now. Everything we spend relies on your council tax. Uh, what we have to do is be really efficient with the way we spend that money. So there's no way in the next 10 years we're going to see any change in that. So what we have to do is look ahead and see the way in which we can make the very best use of every pound of taxpayers' money that's coming in. So that's why, with increasing costs, increasing demand, um, and actually no guarantee there's going to be any extra government money, we have to look to be more efficient. We also need to increase the financial resilience of local government. Uh, some of you watching may be familiar with the fact that uh, a council just north of us in Northamptonshire, the county council there, faced with growing demand for pressures in adult social care, children's services um, and education, uh, they've effectively gone bust. They've become bankrupt. Uh, and that's a real problem for the whole of local government. The pressures there really are making a lot of the authorities that are responsible for the social care systems in this country really, really struggle financially. So what we want to do is make sure that we have a system in place that actually becomes financially resilient and sustainable into the future. All of these factors together are really driving a need to become far more efficient and that means moving to a unitary style of government. There were two options put together over that period of time. So back in 2016, 
the county council developed a business case. We looked at all the options, one authority for Buckinghamshire, looked at two authorities for Buckinghamshire, we even looked at three potential authorities for Buckinghamshire and modelled through exactly what that would mean in terms of savings and increased efficiency. We put forward that proposal in September 2016 to government and it's a well-proven model. This is not something new or radical. This is a system that operates quite widely now across the country and it operates on a proven basis and it's really efficient and it's effective and even though it's been in place for a number of years, nobody has changed it. So it works really well. Our district colleagues came forward with a different proposition in January 2017 in response to the business case that we put in and what they suggested was breaking up Buckinghamshire, effectively reducing it to a sort of postcode, uh, a bit like Middlesex is today, um, and having instead a, a northern unitary based around Aylesbury uh, and a southern unitary based around High Wycombe. Uh, and that proposal went in and both those were with government uh, for a period of about a year to be evaluated. The state came back with the conclusion which said that they recognised that the proposal for a new single council was the best proposal to improve local government and service delivery in the county. It would generate savings, increase financial resilience and facilitate a strategic and holistic approach to planning and housing challenges. And that meant we could deliver good local services. By contrast, and very importantly, he almost effectively ruled out the two council option. He said that establishing two councils for the current county area is unlikely to improve local government in the area, generate significant savings, or improve or provide the capacity to sustain major services or address planning and housing challenges. Therefore, he was minded to approve the proposal that we'd submitted for a single council for the Buckinghamshire geography. So why one rather than two? Well, besides the Secretary of State's decision, I think there are 10 key underpinning reasons. First of all, it provides a much stronger voice for residents and communities and business in Buckinghamshire. And why that's important? Because there's so much change going on. We need a strong voice. We need to be able to knock on the door of senior Secretaries of State, senior Ministers, and actually get hearing. We need to be able to require, almost demand, the sort of money we're going to need for key infrastructure like roads, the health service, broadband, that this county is going to need as we enter a period of very rapid growth over the next 20 to 30 years. And only when you can speak with the authority of representing something like 530,000 people can you get that hearing. You would not get that hearing if you were just simply a, a Wickham-based uh, small council borough. It also generates the biggest savings. We're going to generate at least 18.2 million each and every year. And on a like-for-like -like basis, the equivalent for breaking Buckinghamshire up into two would only generate something like 10 million. So that's 8 million extra each and every year from having a single authority covering the geography of the county. Thirdly, strategic planning. I just mentioned the big growth agenda that we have for the county. That's going to see something like 90,000 new houses between now and around 2050. That's an enormous increase. What we need to do is look at it on a bigger palette than we do at the moment. At the moment, most planning is done on a district basis. So effectively, every little district looks at its own geography rather than looking around it at the bigger context. And you make different decisions when you look at a, at a wider context. So for example, one of the things you would do is you wouldn't just look at where houses can go, you look at the transport implications, you look at where people are going to work, how they get to those jobs, how in fact the employment sites then reach big communication hubs like Heathrow Airport or Luton Airport. It gives you a completely different context when you look on a much bigger scale. You also have the scale to drive big efficiencies. Now all credit to some of my district colleagues by having a single waste collection contract between Chiltern and Wickham district councils they just save many millions of pounds. But just think what you could do if that same waste contract covered all four district councils in Buckinghamshire and the county council, who run a lot of the waste sites around the county and dispose of all the waste that the districts collect. Just think of the buying power we would have there and the many, many millions that we could save on behalf of ratepayers. And lastly on this, the ability to attract and retain the best staff. One of the things we rely on to deliver really good services is that we get the very best staff. 
we're in a very competitive market for really good people. And this is a very high price area because of the high cost of housing. It's really difficult to attract people here. And if you broke Buckinghamshire up, if you effectively disbanded Buckinghamshire, you'd have two small councils trying to attract the very best people. And that's a really difficult thing for them to do. Five other reasons. First of all, you can remove the significant risk of splitting up statutory services. Statutory services are services that we are legally required to provide. Sometimes they are inspected by government or external organisations to make sure the standards are correct. So for example, children's services, particularly protecting some of the most vulnerable children in the county, and also adult social care, and that's services that we provide particularly to the elderly population, but also to many adults in mainstream life but who have some form of disability. Those are really important services. They're provided on a county-wide basis. Splitting those up, tearing them apart, would carry significant risks in terms of the service delivered to some of the most vulnerable sections of our community. We also risk our excellent education system. It's been the county council over the last nearly 50 years that's protected our current education system. It's one of the very best in the country. It's one of the reasons people give for moving to Buckinghamshire and for businesses relocating to Buckinghamshire. Putting that at risk is a really significant problem if you try and split up the county. We also have very close alignment now with colleagues across the public sector. So for example, besides a Buckinghamshire council footprint, we also have a similar footprint for our clinical commissioning group that actually decides what the NHS is going to provide locally. Our hospital trust is also done on a Buckinghamshire-wide basis. We have a situation that the fire and emergency services are on a Buckinghamshire-wide basis. Our local enterprise partnership, which is a government body for delivering money down to businesses and for infrastructure, is on a Buckinghamshire-wide basis. Many business organisations are on a business-wide basis. So actually what you've got across Buckinghamshire is a footprint that would need to align. Again, breaking up Buckinghamshire introduces lots of complications, lots of inefficiencies into that. There's also a concern that's been raised with me that if you break up the county, what you end up with is domination in both potentially smaller boroughs by a very large centre. So for example, in the north, a domination by Aylesbury which isn't something that a lot of people in some of the smaller villages in Buckingham as a town actually relish. And there's also a concern in the south of a domination by Wickham. And if you live in places like Amersham and Chesham and Presswood, is that something you want? And lastly, the scale of the savings mean that you have significant financial resilience. Interestingly, within the last couple of days, the proposal to have Northamptonshire split into two separate unitaries has been questioned. Some of the district councils who would be involved in that are now saying, Do you know, that just wouldn't be financially strong enough to actually last for a period of time. They actually are now saying that maybe, maybe they need a single county based unitary there. It's very important to stress that what I'm talking about here is not a takeover by the county council as it's being portrayed by some colleagues in the district council. This is absolutely about creating a single new council, the disbanding of all five existing councils and creating one new council that absolutely combines the very best of the district and the county council. One of the criticisms that's levelled is that this is just too big. This is what they call a super council. Of course it's not a super council at all. It's absolutely similar to what's been done in Wiltshire, in Durham and many other parts across the UK. Uh, but it's a significant challenge to say, can you be truly local when you are the size of a, of a county geography? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, you can. It's very, very simple to do. And one of the integral parts of our business case has been that we would have a really significant amount of locality working, reflecting the diversity and different needs of the different parts of Buckinghamshire. So for residents, we'd have up to 19 local physical community hubs these are places that residents can walk into to discuss their everyday problems and they want the council to help fix them. Of course they can still do stuff over the internet, but actually lots of people still want somewhere where they can actually talk to a real person and we provide that. We'd also have five local planning committees. Now that's one more than exists in the current district structure, 
we'd have a se separate one for Buckingham, and that would mean again that local decisions on local planning applications would be taken by local county councillors, local unitary members on planning applications relating to their own area. In terms of a structure as well, what isn't decided centrally, which will be the big strategic issues, we would want to devolve down to a structure of local boards. So again, local members could take local decisions on issues and economic affairs issues that affect their locality. So again, it's not one size fits all, it's very much local decisions reflecting local needs in local areas. Fewer councillors, yes, that's been raised as a criticism, but it's also a strength. It actually means cutting away those duplications of having so many layers of councillors, not knowing quite who to talk to. What you'd have now is fewer unitary councillors who you knew exactly who to go to to have your say about the problems in your areas. That will give better opportunities for town and parish councils and for residents to have a say on local issues that really affect them. I said earlier, it's a proven model. This is not something invented here in Buckinghamshire. This is working well around the country. So for example, Jane Scott, who's the leader of Wilkeshire Council, says how strong it's been in terms of a model that's delivered real locality working whilst generating the savings that protect frontline services. And Simon Hennig, the Labour leader of Durham Council, he was involved heavily in the campaign to stop the creation of a single unitary council for Durham. And one of the things he says to me now is, I was wrong. I'm absolutely convinced now that this is the right approach and he would never go back to the old system that he fought to protect. And I'm sure that many people who campaign against this in a couple of years time would say exactly the same thing. I just want to finish off with some fake news because a bit like you see on the internet these days, there's a lot of fake news out there. A lot of stuff that just isn't right that's being said about this proposal. First of all, I keep hearing that it's one size fits all. Who wants a one size fits all council? Just a generic model for the whole of the county. Well, of course it's not. It's total nonsense. That's not what we're proposing. What we're saying is that with the devolution to parish and town councils, the local planning committees, the local hubs that people can walk into, the devolved power and money down to local boards, we are going to have a truly devolved system that gives real authority and real power down to local people and local councillors. I keep hearing it's a county council takeover. It's not. As I said earlier, the county council would disappear. All five councils would disappear. It would be an entirely new council with newly elected councillors, a newly elected leadership, a newly appointed executive to take forward the new organisation. I keep hearing that residents don't want physical hubs. They don't want somewhere they can actually walk in and talk to people. These days, everybody uses the internet. Now, I'm sorry, I really disagree with my district colleagues on this. Of course, many people do now use the internet, but the reality is there's a lot of people who still want to talk to somebody and not to a machine. So we like the idea that we can have a physical presence that people can go to. Sometimes it's the elderly people, some parts of the county, it's actually that they just don't have a good internet connection. I keep reading that there's a £40 million black hole in the county council's budget, and that's the only reason we're promoting this particular option. That's absolute nonsense. There is no £40 million black hole in our budget. No one has ever been able to explain where that number has come from or what time period it covers. It's complete nonsense. In fact, with really prudent financial management the County Council, in the year that's just finished, that's 2018, has actually come in under budget and that's provided us with the financial strength to be able to invest more in our roads this year. That's why we're able now to roll out a five million pothole filling programme that's actually just, uh, just kicked off. And lastly, I keep hearing that two councils would give you best value and be more local. Well, quite frankly, there is no evidence to support that. Breaking up Buckinghamshire, turning us into a postcode, breaking up vital services. 80% of the services in this county are actually provided by the county council on a local basis already. We're really talking about those other 20%. Uh, are they really more local? I don't think so. I live in Chiltern District Council. I don't feel that Chiltern District Council is more local to me than many of the other services I get from the county council. My local tip is local to me. 
So here, two new councils, quite frankly, would struggle to retain key staff. With much duplication of those big, high-cost value services, it would reduce the money that we could save to spend on the front line, and we wouldn't be able to protect local services in the way that we can do with one council and the bigger savings. Wickham, to me, isn't local. Because remember, it's not about keeping what you've got today. It's about having that big borough council run out of High Wickham or run out of Aylesbury. It's not about keeping your little local district council. It would still be very, very different. You have to decide whether that would be a better option. I'm absolutely clear it wouldn't be. So just in summary, what we would see if we actually went ahead with the proposal we put forward? First of all, something that is far simpler. We cut out the confusion of who does what and too much finger pointing between councils. It would be much better value. We'd save at least 18 million each and every year. That would enable us, for example, to more than double the amount we spend on our capital program of resurfacing roads and still have money left over to protect many other frontline services. We could build a primary school each and every year with these sort of savings. And also more local, by actually having devolved services down to local level, local planning areas, local people taking local decisions, we can make this a truly local service delivering really good value on behalf of local residents and local taxpayers. I hope you'll give it your support. Thank you very much for listening.